and I'll let you know what's happening. So nothing's happened, but like, I'll let you know what's happening. Good evening, everyone. I call to order the meeting of the San Francisco Elections Commission. Today is Wednesday, January 18th, 2017, and the time is now 6.07 p.m. I'm Vice President Jordanik, and President Rowe is traveling today, and she's expected to be here in about 25 minutes. So we also have with us today Director John Arntz and Deputy City Attorney Joshua White. Okay, we'll start off with the roll. Commissioner Donaldson is uh, not here. Commissioner Paris? Here. I'm here. Commissioner Savant? Here. Commissioner Yu has an excused absence today. And Commissioner John? Here. And as we said before, uh, President Rowe um, is, has an excused target. So let's move on to item number three, approval of minutes for the previous meeting. Discussion and possible action to approve the minutes for the December 21st, 2000, I'm sorry, agenda item number two, general public comment. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Brent Turner. I'm with the California Association of Voting Officials. I wanted to read a statement uh, for you this evening that harkens back to our last meeting a month ago. Um, let me just read and then I have a packet of information uh, to leave with you. Uh, the fight for transparency and security via open source election systems has been go going on for over a decade and now we see the ramifications of governments ignoring the scientists. Our recent election was likely manipulated by the Russian government and now there is civil unrest. San Francisco was urged to quickly move toward better election systems in 2007, but failed in that duty to the residents of the county, state, and country. This failure of duty is exacerbated by the fact this inaction was not merely negligent, but likely an outflow of corporate vendor and Microsoft lobby affectation. Please do not continue this path. There are more elections coming. At the last meeting, Commissioner Jung was apparently startled to learn that the California Association of Clerks and Election Officials organization was funded by vendors and provides free entertainment and parties for the election clerks. I also mentioned the Clerks Association shared a lobbyist with Microsoft by the name of Barry Brokow. Tonight I will be once again providing a packet of information highlighting the criminal backgrounds and associations of the current proprietary vendors, complete with convictions and more enlightening information. Again, the people request this commission move immediately toward publicly owned voting systems and either enforce that direction upon Director Arnst or remove him immediately. I also uh, will be giving you an ordinance that is um, moving around the, the hall of halls here. Um, we're hoping to make corporate owned software for elections illegal in the county of San Francisco. And I have a packet of information here that states headlines like election company has long criminal history. U.S. voting machine companies' possible ties to foreign governments draws congressional inquiry. U.S. voting machine companies' possible ties to foreign governments. Um, on and on. Voting machines and the bamboozling of America. So this is all stipulated. And uh, of course, I don't know if anybody's noticed, there's a Supreme Court case uh, on point right now that may come forward in the next day, um, but uh, time is of the essence. I appreciate your attention to this matter, and I'll leave this with your, with Josh. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Uh, further public commenters? Hi, my name is Denise Dory. I'm a TV producer for the Bay Area Video Coalition, among other things. And I'm a member of the Harvey Milk Club. We, the people of San Francisco, object to corporate controlled election systems because it's been conducted by, concluded by governments study that these proprietary systems are insecure and should not be used for elections. 
San Francisco should pass an ordinance making corporate controlled election system software illegal. As a democracy, we must have safe and secure elections, not the trust me system. Is it? <laughs> I'd rather know, wouldn't you? So as commissioners, you have a duty to make sure we are moving towards the best methods. The information is in front of you. Please act now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, my name is Janine Lewis, and I am a resident here in San Francisco. I'm in marketing and advertising. Um, I would like to make the following statement, as I believe it is true. The time is now for San Francisco to lead the state and country towards secure election systems. The democracy is now officially in jeopardy, and the timeline shows San Francisco County was put on notice and should have acted in defense of the United States to secure the election. Please tell Director Arns to remove himself from business as usual and join the people demanding general public license open source voting system. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, members of the commission, Director Arns and staff, uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here. My name is Alec Bash. I've been before you in the past to speak about open source code and electronic voting systems. And uh, here again for this, uh, I think it's wonderful that the department did, in, in virtue request this past year, uh, ask for funds for an open source system. I uh, appreciate leadership from the commissioners on this. Uh, and I'm here because I'm quite concerned about how long it is taking to get started on this process. Uh, I understand the last I heard there'd be an RFP prepared for this to hire someone who would uh, basically come up with the re requirements, definitions, and parameters for the, the study. I don't know if there have even been any meetings about that to uh, carry us into fruition and would be very interested in having status reports every month on this because I am afraid that this will just keep on going and keep on going with without much progress. And as other speakers have said, it's uh, it's urgent in this country that we move towards transparent and open election systems that people can trust uh, and know that their votes shall be accurately counted. Thank you very much for your time this evening. Thank you, Mr. Gash. Further members of the public. Hi, my name is Gilbert. I'm a disabled veteran. Um, I think we should ask the assistance of the National Security Agency. I know they get a bad, lot of bad publicity because they've been like breaking the rules, violating the Constitution, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But however, since this is a national security issue, we don't want foreign governments controlling our elections. That's why it's a national security issue. Uh, we should request assistance from them if they have any traffic on uh, foreign powers, what, in interfering with our elections. So, I mean, we have a right to know we're, this is a city. We're citizens. It's our election. Anyway, it may all come to fruition. Nothing may happen. But at least San Francisco will look good as trying to do something about this. Okay, I'm pretty sure most of their stuff is classified, we'll never see it. And all those classified meetings they've had behind closed doors in Washington, they probably know for a fact that the Russians did interfere with our elections, but they can't tell us that because it's classified. Thank you. Okay, seeing no further members of the public, let's move on to item number three, approval of minutes for the previous meeting. Discussion possible action to approve the minutes for the December 21st, 2016 Elections Commission meeting. I move to approve the minutes for the December 21st, 2016 Elections Commission meeting. I second that motion. Okay, Commissioner discussion? Seeing none, uh, public comment? Seeing none? We'll take a vote. Uh, Commissioner Harris? Aye. Commissioner Savant? Aye. Commissioner John? Yes. And I vote yes. Uh, 
and the motion passes unanimously. Let's move on to item number four, review of the November 8, 2016 election. Discussion possible action regarding reviewing the November 8, 2016 election. Okay, on this item, as I said at the last meeting, OPEC um, did have a, a meeting to review the election, and we had a, a very good discussion. It was uh, myself and Commissioner Safant. And um, I, at today's meeting, I did circulate an updated document that I presented at the OPEC meeting. It's, it's a, a couple tables that list the, uh, some statistics on the vote by mail ballots and provisional ballots compared with previous elections. And um, so that's there for us to look at. And um, there are also all the materials that Director Arntz provided to BOPEC were also part of uh, the agenda packet today. At BOPEC, we didn't make any sort of motion because um, at a previous commission meeting, I know Deputy City Attorney White said it's sufficient for the commission just to discuss the election as part of the agenda item. So uh, just open it up to commissioner comments and questions. I need to commend you on doing a uh, very good job at compiling all of this information. I do apologize for not being able to make um, the last BOPEC meeting where I know you went over this, but um, I do know this day took a lot of work. Um, and of course, I can't find any uh, big issues with this report, but you've done an excellent job. And uh, Commissioner Jordanik, I mean, can you just, uh, for my reference, point out where, I see the tables, where is the comparison to the prior election? So the, um, so this is the document that I, I was referring to that I gave, do you see this one? Oh, I see it in the separate, yeah, I see it now. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so, yeah, just to clarify, this document was actually very easy to, um, to update because they just added a single row of numbers from the numbers that the department provided. So, um, but Director Parents, would you like to just kind of go through the documents that you provided to the commission? Just, you could just say what they are so that people have a reference point. So, uh, one of the documents is the provisional ballot status report, which provides a breakdown uh, by category of the provisional ballots that uh, we received on election day and then the disposition of those ballots. Uh, so the receiving, uh, which were counted fully, which were partially counted based on ballot type on the left-hand side, and then on the right-hand side, the disposition for those ballots. Uh, the, on the flip side of the same page is a vote by mail ballot status report. Again, the total number of ballots uh, accepted for counting on the left, and then the dispositions uh, in the middle and in the right, and the reasons for the disposition. Um, the uh, the columnar, columnar, whatever the word is, uh, uh, edge machine ballot stash report, is something the commission's asked for for many years. Uh, it's, it's a report that shows the, how many votes were cast on the touch screen of each polling place. Um, then also this, uh, the, the, the big document that's 68 pages. Uh, this is our uh, our incident re reporting uh, report from election day that we use just to keep track of our efforts to call that come in. It's not a, this is not meant to be a, an encyclopedia. It doesn't track every call, um, but it just, it just if we're, we have different resources involved in, a, uh, in an issue, then we try to keep track of it using the system. This is a report from the system, so um, and it's, it's organized by, by precinct. And we don't edit this. This, this. this is how it is on election day. This is what you have. So. Uh, I have a question for um, uh, for BOPEC, actually. So uh, I know in this table, which is very helpful, that the November 26th election uh, showed a percent uh, rejected provisional ballot rate of 20.5%, which is the highest in the five uh, other incidents uh, on this table, and about 2,000 higher than the rejected number in June. 16, I assume. I mean, that we also have uh, you know, about 150,000 more votes. Uh, but relative to the, the last uh, general election, presidential election, November uh, 2012, 
uh, was there, uh, how did the percent rejected compare? That's a good question, and I, I, uh, I don't, yeah, I, I don't know offhand. Commissioner Pierce, do you want to say something? I don't know offhand either. Um, I don't have that figure memorized, but I do know that during general elections, the percent that's rejected does spike up. And the reason for that is oftentimes um, provisional voters um, who are ineligible for whatever reason, the election they turn out for the most is the presidential. So we tend to get a higher number of rejected people. At least that's how I've seen the data in San Mateo County. If I'm incorrect in that, um, being compared to this county, please let me know, Director. Um, but I do know there generally tends to be a spike in rejections uh, because just more people turn out, and including ineligible voters. Yeah, this is something we noticed, and we did discuss it at the meeting briefly, and rather than paraphrase your occurrence, I could just let you you state what you had said when we asked about that, how the rejection rate was higher. Yeah, so the the, the, the numbers for November 2016 track really well the November 2008 election, uh, and the percentage of challenges is, is almost uh, the same. 2012 is a little bit lower, just because you, the what happens in presidential elections is that folks who aren't registered come up to vote, so that always, uh, Creates a higher number of challenge provisional envelopes. 2012, there was a less of a turnout. That's why you have a, you have a higher percentage uh, of accepted or, or, or lower challenge. And then in 2008, uh, the, the numbers are, they track really well. So, so somewhere in the 20 percent neighborhood. Yeah, right around that. Yeah, the other thing we noticed is that the percentage of challenge vote by mail ballots was a lot lower. And um, that's also something we asked you about. Would you like to share that? Yeah, so uh, we we put uh, more resources towards this because you know through time uh, we were sending notices to voters and then we also were one of the benefits from online registration is we get more emails of voters are able to contact voters more readily because uh, a lot of phone numbers we have aren't valid uh, so if someone were to send us uh, an envelope where it would, the, there was no signature vote by mail envelope there was no signature or if we couldn't uh, successfully and um, uh, compare the signature uh, because we didn't see enough common points, uh, consistent common points uh, made in signatures. Uh, we could contact the voters, they come in, and uh, we also would mail forms out. Also, what this what happened this election happens often in presidential elections, especially when there's not an incumbent running, is that voters are, are more motivated uh, to participate. Uh, and also, uh, even though the narrative about the elections for presidential elections tends to be rough uh, around the edges. Voters have a different perspective and they're actually rather enthusiastic to participate. Uh, so when we contacted voters for this election, they actually had a higher response rate to come in and fix or to send us a uh, form asking for more information or a fresh signature than we did even in the, in the June election. So that's what you're seeing here. I just want one point of clarification on um, this sheet that has the breakdown of um, different challenge ballots. For the very last one voted the precinct ballot, the seven votes, those are supposed to be provisional voters that were identified as provisional but accidentally voted on a precinct ballot, correct? Well, it's the same ballot. It's not a different ballot in San Francisco. I don't know if it is in San Mateo, but it's the well, same. No, it is the same ballot. It's the same ballot card, but uh, at times, voters will, instead of placing the, the poll workers don't catch it, they'll, instead of placing the card into the pink envelope, they'll put it into the machine. Okay. And I, I thought, thought as much, I just wanted to make sure I was reading that correctly. And I believe this may have been answered at um, uh, the BOPEC committee meeting, but, um, and this is the summary data table that I'm referring to um, on table one. Uh, do we have any idea why the percentage of challenged ballots for the November 2016 um, election went down to 1.1 percent? I mean, was there any kind of logical reason? Yeah. So again, just just so our process is getting better. Then also the, the voters for this for a presidential election, they're more engaged and they're also uh, they, they're more responsive to us asking for information. So that's why the, the combination of factors you're seeing have a lower percentage there compared to the previous election. 
Thank you. Is there further commissioner comments for me on public comment? Okay, uh, public comment on this item. Thank you, commissioners. My name is David Carey. Uh, I think it's important to acknowledge the successes in this election with some uh, record turnout in terms of numbers of voters and near record uh, turnout in, in kind of modern times of uh, turnout in terms of a percentage of registered voters. And that things went as smoothly as they did, I think is a testament to the success of the department. Uh, on election day, I did some election observation here in the basement of City Hall. Uh, to follow up on observing what the impact was of the, the new configuration of uh, how they had things set up down there and was pleased to report at BOPEC and also hear that there were, uh, there was not a problem with people waiting in lines. I uh, timed how long people waited from 7 in the morning till 7 at night every half hour and uh, I never got above 10 minutes which was, which was great compared to uh, really long lines that I observed in 2012. I also want to say uh, I much appreciate the continued uh, great reporting that uh, the department did for ranked choice voting, including uh, 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 RCD tallies on, uh, at, the, at the beginning of election night and also at the end of election night and throughout the, uh, the canvas period. So those improvements were great to see to be continued. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kerr. Uh, for the members of the public. Okay, seeing none. Let's move on to um, item number five, commissioner's reports. Any commissioner comments? Yes, um, so I've been busy at the high school that I'm teaching at to try to get as many students registered as possible. I did pick up approximately 1,000 voter registration cards um, from the department. I have not gotten a thousand back. Um, that stack is all I've gotten out of all the ones I brought. But I estimated there's probably about a thousand students there um, that have that. Getting my colleagues to distribute them is a different matter. Um, on another note, I want to apologize for my apparent accidental violation of the Sunshine Ordinance. Uh, my colleagues did receive an email uh, with an update to um, my search for our new secretary, and I erroneously believed that since discussion of details would only happen in a closed session that is not open to the public, that not having public means it was okay for me to send the email, but I have been informed that that is not the case. Um, so sorry to the public was an accident and even if I hadn't sent it, you still don't get to find out what it was about anyway, um, as it does relate to HR issues regarding our um, potential new secretary. So that was my fault, but I'm hoping that my fellow commissioners would understand without the public why I could make that assumption. Um, so apologies for that. Uh, but regarding the secretary search itself, uh, public information that I can at least give is I have interviewed all round three candidates. Um, so I had six people in round three out of the initial 56. Uh, we narrowed that down. Um, from that, I do have um, three top candidates plus an alternate, uh, but I won't be able to give you further details or information until we're able to have a closed session during our next meeting. Um, but I'm very much hoping that it, by that time, we can finally arrange a, a sit down and within uh, the next two months, we can finally have a new secretary. I have just a question, couple of questions on that. Did you interview the people in person or over the phone? No, this is a phone interview. And regarding uh, second step, I did think that I'd be able to finish all the phone interviews by time that we could actually stick this on the agenda. But tracking down those last few people was very difficult, and clearly I didn't send uh, the email about this in time. So I probably do have a whole other month. I probably can actually interview some people in person. Um, I wasn't expecting to have that time, uh, but now that I do, I probably could make that happen and make a better judgment call about it. Um, 
But if, you know, I'll probably do that. Let's face it, it's for the best. <laughs> okay, yeah, just as an informa informational um, item, the last time we did this, the commission uh, interviewed, I think, five candidates in person. And so I'm not, I don't think you have to narrow it down beyond that. And um, we, we scheduled a special meeting. So I think we can basically, anytime the candidates are ready, a meeting can be scheduled. Yes. Question um, for Mr. Josh White. Uh, considering we have not had a discussion of greater detail, which I am not willing to do since this is not closed session, since we'd be discussing names and qualifications. Is it kosher within guidelines to actually uh, schedule these sit-down meetings uh, for the entire commission between now and our next meeting? Or for purposes of making sure that we actually have on the agenda, on an item, a closed session where we do talk about that at the February meeting, should we wait to schedule those until after? You could do either. I mean, you could, you could, you know, uh, communicate with the candidates, find a date that they're all available, you know, ask the commission president, uh, you know, if, uh, you know, if, if, I mean, basically you can do the logistical work to figure out when a time is that the commissioners are available and the candidates are available, and then you could set a you could set a special meeting. You wouldn't you, you could just um, as long as it's properly noticed, um, you know that's that's fine. You don't have to set the special meeting now. And you know, the logistical discussion, um, the logistical communications with other commissioners. Are you available on such and such date? You could you could have those um, off offline. Uh, that wouldn't that wouldn't sunshine ordinance because those would be substantive communications. No, I'm well, just really checking now. Um, okay, then I can begin planning that um, for a date after our February meeting. Okay, just for the record, Commissioner Donaldson um, just joined us at 6.32 p.m. And we're, we're on agenda item number five, commissioner's reports. So are there, is there, um, for the commissioners that would like to comment on this item? Um, I, I guess I'd just like to comment, uh, I did not uh, get to comment last month or didn't hear comments about the election itself. Um, I was the inspector of the elections, um, thought it was generally very smooth, expected actually higher activity, though obviously there was a huge vote by mail uh, return. And um, I thought it was very good. One of the things I do want to mention, I know we're going to go further over the election, it's one of the items here, but I thought that the, in particular, the poll worker manual this time was perfect. It always changes, but this time it had all the pieces that it, it could certain times it missed things that I hoped were in there. And other times I thought, oh, that's a new good addition, but it's missing something else. I wouldn't change anything if you find the sweet spot, in my opinion. <laughs> that's too late. It's already changed since oh. November. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's it. Thanks. Not for the bad though. <laughs> More perfect dirt. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'd like to mention just two things. Um, first, I I um, added to the documents on the table and I circulated a, an article that appeared in the Examiner last Tuesday. And this is an article about the um, you know progress on the open source voting project. And it looks like this. And I thought it was a, a balanced article. And um, you know, we can see that this is something the public is interested in. And then also, um, I, I don't have the details, but I believe that the federal government declared um, elections as what's called critical infrastructure. It's a designation that the federal government uses that applies to you know parts of government. So it's um, this is something that I'm not sure if it was done by or in conjunction with the Department of Homeland Security, they they made this designation of elections, um, which is which is new going forward. And I'm not sure, like I said, what the details are, but but it, it may have implications for policy or funding or something. I have a question about that. Do you know who makes the designation? Is it the executive or the legislature or a special commission? I, I was saying I think it might be the Department of Homeland Security. Just the Director of Homeland Security. Oh, the Director of Homeland Security. Oh, do you have more information on this topic, or? Yeah, so voting systems are considered critical infrastructure, and it's a, it's an optional 
choice. It's a choice for jurisdictions to make if they want to opt in to the, pro the programs that are that are offered when something is considered uh, critical infrastructure. Uh, so, but one of the but pieces of the, this uh, critical infrastructure program were already utilized prior to the November during the November of the, the November election process. For instance. Uh, I think I mentioned during one of the meetings where uh, our public facing internet was actually um, tested to see if there were any vulnerabilities uh, and there weren't and that was through Homeland Security. Uh, also there were, uh, there, was, uh, there were other tools that were uh, and other thoughts that were conveyed to us and to other jurisdictions that we uh, utilized prior to the election. Uh, but there's no, there's no, right now there's, there's no protocol to follow for us. We're not supposed to take certain steps to, to, to participate in the, the critical infrastructure realm. Uh, it's, it's something that you opt in for, but, but also uh, one of the things that the critical infrastructure designation does is it provides the, the, the director of the treasury uh, the ability to, to, to investigate and bring charges if there's any um, any attacks, any improprieties that are undertaken against the voting system or voting in, in the country. Right now, there's there'd be no standing to bring a suit against anyone on the federal level if, if, a, if a voting system, let's say in San Francisco, unless there's a federal election, um, were tampered with. Now, there's, now there would be a set of causes of action that the, that the Treasury Director can, uh, can utilize to, to bring uh, people to, to justice uh, if they were to harm the, the voting system or voting in, in the United States. Uh, so that, that's one component, but then, and then also just the tools and the information that would be available to the Homeland Security uh, regarding specific, not specifically, but I think people are thinking more along the cyber security aspect of voting systems more than, than they are other components. Although I did read something that the, 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 uh, because, voting system, because voting equipment is dropped off at polling places prior to election day, potentially that's something that would be folded into uh, Homeland Security's consideration of how to ensure that voting system, the voting equipment, uh, are intact and working properly on election day at, at the polling places. Um, the Secretary of State uh, hasn't had a chance to, 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 to bring any information forward or make any comment. This happened, I think, this week. I, I learned about it. I learned about it yesterday. Um, so I'm sure the Secretary of State will bring information forward. You know, I'm happy to share that with the Commission. Um, we're, um, yeah, but right now there's nothing for the department to do, nothing for the city to do, uh, there's nothing for the state even to do to opt into this. Uh, you know, we don't want to change any any uh, procedures or fill any applications out or anything. Uh, but uh, it, I, once Secretary of State gets engaged, I'm sure that uh, the, this, this California will formalize this reviewing of cyber threats and, and other. Uh, potential attacks against the voting system and the voting process in California and the counties. So this is the the entire election process, or is it just the voting? Well, it's the process. process. Yeah. Okay. okay, interesting. Well, and then also the caveat I learned too. I think this may have been yesterday or today. Is that um, this is a designation that can be reversed with the, with the incoming administration. So it's not necessarily permanent. Correct. Okay, uh, further comments before public comment on this item? Okay, let's open it up to public comment. Okay, seeing none, let's move on to agenda item number six, director's report. Yeah, and I apologize for getting this out to you. I, I, so I, I added information regarding the open source uh, system, the developing the voting system uh, based on open source software. And I had referred to other agencies uh, and I wanted to get, I didn't want to put information in my report in relation to other agencies without them uh, reviewing what I said to make sure I characterized the information correctly. I didn't get feedback, final feedback until today. Um, so that's why I sent it out today. It wasn't like I'm, I didn't do my homework or anything. I just had it done on Friday. I was in communication with President Rose, so she was aware uh, that uh, the report was waiting for some, some review uh, by other folks. Um, I don't know. Do you want to ask a question or? Well, I'll, you know, I I would like to ask questions myself, but um, 
Yeah, sure, we can do it that way. But but before we do that, is there anything else you'd like to add about your report? Uh, well, you mentioned the uh, critical infrastructure, so I'm going to go through that. Um, I, I think, so there'll be monthly meetings uh, with this group that's mentioned in my report, the Mayor's Office, Department of Technology, uh, the Committee on Information Technology, COIP, uh, will be monthly. And, and I, right now, the meetings seem to be shaping up to occur uh, prior to the Commission's monthly meeting. So I think I'll be able to include uh, any, any activity or any actions from those meetings in, the, in my report to the Commission. Um, then, then also you'll notice that uh, next month or two, uh, the city, and, and a lot of the work will be done by me, uh, will we'll be issuing an RFP uh, to identify a consultant to essentially do a cost benefit analysis on the city developing its own voting system that's based on open source software. Um, and then the, the, the mayor's office uh, they they want they need to have uh, some numbers, uh, so th there won't be any any, uh, any additions to, to the next fiscal year's budget for building a uh, potential voting system. Uh, but if the, if the report comes back that uh, the, the benefits are there to justify developing a voting system, then in January of next year, this is we're going through our budget process now. Uh, we'll we'll also we'll add to the budget process. Any, any potential costs to developing a voting system. So. Okay, um, any commissioner comments and questions? Um, I had a question in section A, uh, I believe it's number seven, where it's saying, um, I'm sorry, eight, where it's saying that 300,000 has been allocated toward the open source um, voting system it doesn't have an expiration date um, at the end of the current fiscal year. But does it have any expiration date? No, and I, I put that, the reason I termed, I stated that way is because Commissioner Donaldson had that question last meeting. Mm -hmm. And so I well, was just memorializing actually my answer to his question last meeting. There is no expiration date on that funding. <coughs> okay. My other question um, is just more question of clarification. Uh, this is uh, section D, item number two, um, preparing to attend the Youth Commission to get under 18s uh, registered to vote under Senate Bill 113. I'm not familiar with this bill. What does it mandate? That's, that would, uh, that's allowing 16-year-olds uh, to pre-register to vote. Uh, and so that's one thing with registration cards that you have, you, have the pre, you don't have the most recent version so the new version that we're receiving now actually uh, brings into the language on the card that the 16-year-old were to fill it out. Okay. So that's what that's what going on. Yes. Speaking of which, it's okay if they cross out the 19 and put in 20 for 2000 because these kids were born in 2000 or later. That's a line bender, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, I told them it wouldn't be a problem, but. Uh, I figured I might as well ask this yeah. right there. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we were doing the math actually last week. We, yeah, we all got downcast for a few moments. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. um, I have some questions about the open source item. So for starters, like, are the meetings that you're having with the mayor's office in Kuwait, are they, are they more, um, are you kind of, are you kind of collaborating together on what RFP will look like and kind of each party participant has sort of like things they would like to see or is it more that they're kind of at your service where you're driving way you like this to look and they're kind of assisting you with that? Or, and what's kind of the dynamic between? Yeah, I don't quite drive the mayor's office yet, but I'm working <laughs> on it. Um, so, no, I mean, so basically the mayor's office is, is taking the lead on this project. And like I said, the board's not the mayor, isn't it? And, and uh, so I appreciate it very much. And uh, so the mayor's office can call a meeting and, and folks will show up more so than if I were to call a meeting and ask someone. So the, the mayor's office uh, is, is organizing the meetings and, and people are, are trying or wondering you know, what, what are the next best steps to take on this. Uh, developing a voting system has not been done in this county, it hasn't been done. It's being done in LA and it's an ongoing project. But, uh, so it's, it's, it's not it's not just software. There's a lot more going on. There's a lot of processes too. Uh, 
outside the voting system, but just within the city that you have to move this project like this through. So the people who have, would have uh, similar experiences in their work with something like this or in the meeting, and then uh, people are, are determining you know, who's going to do what and who's responsible for what. Okay, and then also you mentioned the cost benefit analysis part. Um, is that is that just going to be like one component of the responsibilities? Because I know, um, you know, you mentioned in previous meetings that like, like what the spec for what what should be developed, you know, and um, how it should be developed and partitioned into, you know, the subsequent stages. So, um, in other words, you know, how much of the the responsibility would be the cost benefit analysis versus like other responsibilities that would go towards subsequent development. Do you, have, do you have a sense of that? Or? My opinion is I don't think this person will be doing the specs or this group will do it, doing this, whoever does it, uh, for the system. I mean, that, that's going to be a more bigger process. Uh, this is basically to see, you know, what, what does it take to build the voting system? Uh, you know, what, you know what, how much would it cost and what was the time? So those would be the three major areas of review and, and reporting. Um, certainly there have to be some sense of what a voting system is and what we want to do. But no, I don't, this is not going to be the report that states there is San Francisco's voting system. That's, that's not the purpose. I'm sorry, what was the last one? So this won't be the report that states here is San Francisco's future voting system. That's not the purpose. So the purpose is, is for uh, the report to indicate if there is a cost, for the cost, is the, do the benefits, um, uh, do they equal us, the, the city, moving forward, developing the voting system? Mm -hmm. That's so. That's why there's not. There would be no time to spec out a, a system either. If we want to get this done, really issued in a couple of months, identify someone or group, whoever, whoever uh, is the, the successful candidate or candidates, and then do the review, write a report, get it to the mayor's office uh, by January. Uh, it just it'd just be too much ground to cover. So this this would. So this is not going to be something down into the very you know, most basic technical details of, of the system. It's just it's too big. And would the would the responsibility also be to um, like map out what the next steps would be after this phase too, assuming that the city wants to go forward with it, or is that something? That I think so to a degree. But I think I think I mean, it really it's a cost benefit analysis. I mean, like here's the pros, here's the cons, here's the costs, here's the timelines. You know, city, what do you want to do? That, that's that's how I see this. And then the city will map out its next steps from there. I think I think that's what will happen. I don't think this person or group will do it. Okay. Um, and then um, lastly, you know, I noticed number seven it says that the three hundred thousand is um, like part of that is going to be going towards the work that the group is doing now. I guess I'm, I'm assuming if there's staff that's needed to put together the RFP, some of the is that yes, um, yeah, okay. right, yeah. So might, I'll give you a lot of the work though, so that I, I won't be drawing from the three hundred thousand dollars. Okay, one question I had is, um, you know, assuming that if the person that is hired um, or group is hired has um, like certain things they need to do that require money, like maybe you know holding community meetings or running facilities and things like that, would the do you think that the um, the the leaders would the group would um, would that be coming out of the money that you're already paying them, or would they have like a separate pool that they would draw from? Right now, this is the amount of money that's allocated for the review. I, what, what I meant was, is there? There's no, there's no other pot. This is it. Right. Well, so what? It, well, previously you said that part of the three hundred thousand is going to go towards, um, you know, towards writing the RFP that. Will, will be go, going towards selecting the <coughs> consultant. So, in other words, the consultant, there will be less than 300000 at that point to um, to pay the consultant, right? So, my question is um, if there are other costs that are needed in the course of this phase, are those going to be, um, is that going to be, is it all going to go towards the consultant or will there be some other fraction of the 300000 that's going to be set aside that could be used? You know, maybe for other. Uh, I don't know. You know I, I don't know. I mean, right now, what the way, right now, like what right now is getting an RFP like out of it. 
trying to find uh, something similar. That's where the thinking has been. But right now, people think the three hundred thousand dollars will be what's used uh, in all areas, in related in, in conjunction, associated with the drafting of this cost-benefit analysis of developing a voting system. You know, if if the responses come back and I don't know if they list the uh, needs for for uh, you know, a budget for other activities, maybe the mayor's office will provide. I don't know. But right now, I know we have three hundred thousand dollars. Beyond that, I, can't, I don't know. Okay. okay thank you. Uh, I, I'd like to continue a little along, be more discussion along this line. I I guess I don't know exactly when the three hundred thousand is allocated for this project. What the legislation defines. A little surprised here that this is a cost benefit analysis for for the source voting, given that there's many preferences that have been stated since I don't know 2007, six, both at the supervisor level and at this body, a preference for open source voting. Um, certainly, we want to understand what the cost implications are and, and some sort of a scope. But my concern would be if we're spending three hundred thousand dollars, which is not a small amount of money just to decide whether there's cost benefit and we don't even, and even though we've already stated a preference for this as a county, um, I don't understand what would go into that decision that would, that would say that given that we've stated that policy, why we would be spending the money on this kind of a thing. I think that one of the things that I believe is missing and I think that this money should be going for, I mean, we want to do some small piece to at least do a cost estimate, that's great, but in doing such a cost estimate, you should look at some kind of an architecture that has to do with the components of the system and, and allow that they make some recommendations about how to attack that from an open source standpoint. Um, and, and from that cost, then certainly a cost benefit could be performed out of that, but simply doing a cost benefit of saying, Here's some rough number. Here's what it's, various vendors have, have done it. And gosh, for San Francisco, we could buy something for the same and end up buying a, a proprietary system anyway. After we spent three hundred thousand dollars to make that evaluation, sounds like a waste of taxpayer money and going goes against our policy. So I don't know how we can influence this, but I would like to at least state my preference that this that the formulation of this RFP, though it has a cost benefit component, actually results in something that allows us to say what the components are, what a recommended approach would be, and the cost by those components, as well as sort of a delivery timeline. So it has a little more engineering to it than a policy, which sound, this sounds to me, to me like more of a policy and a financial exercise. So how did I, did, did, Mr. Director, is there any way we can influence that? Yeah, I mean, right now nothing's been written. So, uh, uh, you know, right now really just getting people organized and thinking about this beyond uh, you and a handful of other people really has been an achievement. Uh, so uh, you know, I don't have, I don't, I, I can't speak for other people right now. I can certainly you know, bring this up. Uh, so you're saying you want to have more technical specifications detailed in this report? Well, so I, I don't know if I would call them technical specifications, if that's, if that's the preferred term, that's fine. What I would say is that I think we kind of know what the components are, right? You have, you, if I were to ask you what are the components of a voting system, you would probably it'd be very tangible. You'd probably name them off on your finger. But you know what they are and describing them, how you might attack them as an engineering exercise, I think, or a development exercise, I think, would be something that would be a reasonable objective out of this amount of money. An objective that says we're going to spend three hundred thousand dollars in another whatever eight months, including the development of an of a RFP to go out to to get back something that says it costs this much and here's the benefits, and then somebody would say, oh, that sounds like it costs too much. Let's just buy another system. Is it's I don't see the value in that. Certainly, once again, having a cost number, knowing what we need to budget over what period of time and what the deliverables might be. That makes perfect sense to me, and that seems like that should be the objective. So I guess my, my question is how the objective became cost-benefit analysis um, with this $300,000. Maybe you can explain how that became the objective at this point. That's what I'm calling it. I don't know what the name of the RFP is. That's, okay. what, that's what it seems like to me is people want to know what the cost is going to be, what are they going to get for that cost, and what's the timeline. To me, it seems straightforward. I don't, I don't see it the way that you do. I, I mean, if you want to have more technical specification that you know, we can build that into it. I, I, have to, I don't know what the technical components of the voting system is. I never built one. I don't do that. So I don't, I don't know the answer to that. 
uh, you know, I do have uh, information, you're welcome to send it to me. Well, I, I guess I, I would just say that I do think we should define it, right? And some of that work was done as part of the voting systems task force, but I think we should say like, so there's the, you know, there's the um, precinct voting, you know, a piece. There is a the central tabulator. There is the voting management system. So I think, you know, that, that grossly, you could probably name those components yourself. But I do think that it would be good to define those in, in the form, in, as we formulate some idea of how we would attack this and that, that, I guess I would just say that to refine the objective here out of this, the expenditure of this $300,000 other than a cost benefit analysis, I think would be, would be very useful. And you know, maybe there's some outside conversation we can have on that. Yeah, I, I wanna echo what Commissioner Donaldson said. Um, uh, I, what I had in mind uh, and sort of what I thought the commissions objective was for that money to what was not to do, you know, kind of a utilitarian uh, assessment of whether costs exceed benefits. So the commission has already spoken uh, on that general policy preference. Uh, I, I suppose what I would like to see out of that is a game plan, right? How to get from here to there? What are the guideposts? How are we gonna get there? That's the question that I, I want answered, not should we get there, does the, do the, do the uh, benefits exceed the cost? That's, I think we're past that question. Uh, and so I actually don't think it's sufficient to simply include specifications and cost benefit analysis. I suggest we, we rethink that report to focus it on how we're gonna get from here to there. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I, I think that the idea as I understood with it is that this phase would be a planning phase and at the conclusion of this phase, we wanna be at a point where you know, we, we know about how much it's gonna cost, exactly what the next stage is gonna be, you know, you know, to set up the RFPs for the development phase. And I think, um, and I think it's important that whoever's, um, you know, running this next phase of the project be someone that's, you know, committed to, to doing the project. And, you know, what is it gonna take to do it? How should it be done? If it's kind of a neutral, neutral person that's, you know, doesn't have any, um, you know, vested interest in succeeding, then I don't see how how we really be at that point at the conclusion of the, at the of the planning phase. And I also think if it were just to be a cost benefit analysis, you know, I, I agree. I think three hundred thousand is is kind of a waste of money. I and mean, you're not, you know, at the conclusion of that phase, we we be back to where we we were before, where we still don't know what the next steps are to to actually build the build the project. So. I mean, I'd certainly like to see us be at a point where where we can move on to actual development after this planning phase is complete. And sure, we could, you know, at that point, we could ask ourselves, um, you know, do we want to proceed to the next phase? But at least we'll have the information there as to how we, we do proceed at that point. But, um, yeah, so I agree with the other commissioners. Um, on, on a different item on, on the report, um, this is a very useful report, by the way, of um, Dr. Burns. Um, there was item four under uh, B, B4. I was just wondering where that report is. I, I did a cursory look for it and I couldn't find it. Is that posted on the uh, department's website? No, it's sent to, to the Elections Assistance Commission. Oh, so we have to get it from the EAC. Uh, I can give you a copy if you want it. Yeah, I'd be interested in that. That'd be great. Thank you. Are there uh, further comments before? Oh, it's uh, 7 to 1 p.m. and Commissioner or President Rose just arrived. President Rose, would you like to sit here? Go ahead, please. Okay, um, so let's open it up to public comment on this item. President Rose, on item number six, correct his report. So, Commissioners, good, good evening. Uh, I'm Jim Salinas, senior native San Franciscan, born and raised in San Francisco, and lived in San Francisco my entire life. I'll pass the half century mark, and I've had an opportunity uh, to vote uh, in every election since I became a voting age. It's a little poll when I walked in here. I was attending a, a commission meeting next door. I've served on the three most prestigious commissions in this town, and I'm a little 
<laughs> taken aback. I first came in and I thought to myself, it's like a scene out of The Wizard of Oz because I hear a voice talking but I can't see what he's saying. And then I realize I, it's the director. Uh, so I'm not sure who you guys teed off uh, to end up with uh, this commission uh, hearing room. But please know that uh, I'm appalled by the fact that uh, I'm a taxpayer, uh, Hummer, uh, you know, since uh, 1967. And uh, so I, you know, expect my tax dollars to be used wisely. And uh, as I watch this commission, uh, because all of you are volunteer citizens, none of you are, this is not your full-time job. You don't get paid to do this. Uh, or if you do, I'd like to know how. Um, but in any event, uh, I would think that $300,000 is a lot of money. Anytime I, and some of the departments that I um, work with obviously had budgets. I don't believe that the Elections Commission has a million or two dollars uh, worth of budget. But I would hope that a, some serious consideration would be given to having a commission secretary, Madam President. Um, I don't see how a volunteer um, panel uh, can operate without a uh, commission secretary. So I would hope that uh, with $300,000, we could go out and hire a very capable uh, sister for one, any one of the communities and allow you to do some good work. Uh, I have no idea how you guys do what you do, but uh, I commend you. Uh, I, you know, shoestring budget is probably not what it is, right? Because I can see one of the commissioners kind of giving me that look like you have don't know the half of it. Um, in any event, commissioners, uh, please take uh, my comments seriously. Uh, those are my tax dollars. Um, I worked really hard uh, for 40 years to make sure that the city is fully funded every step of the way. I've been involved in budget uh, hearings and budget uh, conversations. And so um, I would hope that this commission would take its charge uh, seriously. I know you do. Uh, and make sure that you have a commission secretary that sort of that allows you, when you guys are actually doing your real job, to pay the rent, the high rents, uh, that you have the ability to do some good work. Thank you, Commissioners, and thank you for all the good work that you do. Happy New Year. Thank you. Yeah, just so you know, we are in the, the process of our hiring a secretary that was mentioned earlier in the meeting. Yeah. I'm sorry I missed it. I have you next door. Thank you, Commissioner. Thanks. Madam President, Mr. Acting President, uh, Director Lunch, the City Attorney Alec Bash again, and um, I appreciate the opportunity to review the Director's report on this. I am pleased to see that there actually was a meeting that took place January 10th. Uh, in some ways, it's a step forward to, to actually meet, which is wonderful. Uh, in other ways, as I heard some of the early discussion about what the uh, purpose of the document that the meeting would produce, it seemed like it would be a step backwards that we did have an election task force as one of the commissioners indicated who served on that task force. Uh, we had the LAFCO report, the city's local agency formation commission report, which um, all these have uh, carried this pretty far along and I really appreciated the comments by the commissioners as they talked about what they were hoping to come out of the report. Um, I had thought there was going to be something along the lines of what people have been saying, that this would be an RP to bring someone on board who would come up with the specs and everything that you need to do in order to then hire somebody to proceed to develop the system. And there is a matter of the timing involved in this, of course, because now, we know that there is the extension of the existing contract un until 2018, which will carry through uh, the con conclusion of the present vendor's work with the city, who apparently has told the city that they would not be interested in continuing with the city after that. And if we don't have an open source system in place after 2018, then we are going to be put into a position where we may have to go with an existing vendor with a closed source system, and that is against all of, of the policy direction in which the city has been headed. So I think the time is of the essence. I think it's a real shame that we're having this discussion now, six months after the beginning of the fiscal year, and when in, in reality it's apparent that there's been virtually no progress on fleshing out what the report would be. Uh, we've, we've spent six months and we had an important election in the meantime, but um, uh, we haven't been able to walk and talk at the same time on this issue. So I just want to e e express that concern and my appreciation for the 
Commissioner's comments and my appreciation also for Director Roger because I know this is done, not the kind of work that you've ever been involved in in the past and it is a whole growing effort to work with the the city's technical people to come up with something and I would hope that there would be some technical expertise brought in to assist the Department of, of Elections and what, what would be important to have in the, this document from people who are really advocates for the system and not simply other city agency staff who are doing their job, which I well understand, having worked for the city many years myself. So um, there are a number of uh, very skilled people, obviously, on the commission itself and outside of the commission who have been involved in some of the other work that I've done. It would be very helpful if there were an opportunity to have some public participation in this process, some technical participation. Thank you for your time, Chief. Thank you, Mr. Crush. Hello, thank you, Commissioners. My name is David Carey. Um, I want to uh, say I appreciate the fact that there's a, a substantive report from the director on this open source project uh, tonight. Um, and uh, I'm, I also think it's, think it's a good thing that he is working to, to get some of the other uh, players in city government involved in this to make sure that we're uh, developing the appropriate buy-in to help move this forward. Uh, I, I do echo some of the concerns that have been raised about the, this next year being spent only doing a, a um, cost-benefit report, particularly given that many of the benefits are not something that are financially qualifiable, uh, quantifiable uh, for this. Um, I was concerned about how the, this, when the $300,000 was being budgeted last year, how we were moving from what was in the resolution of being kind of a nimble, lightweight uh, development process to one that was looking more and more like kind of a traditional monolithic, you know, do things a step at a time and don't do anything next until you've got a first thing signed off and checked off on. And I understand that there's some element of that you have to deal with in a, in a government funded project. But I am concerned that, from what I'm hearing tonight, that we're moving even further away from uh, a process that the uh, resolution uh, initially outlined. So I'd hope, that, and I'd, I'd also think that in order to develop really some good, solid budget numbers or cost estimates, there is going to have to be some work done to identify what the components of a system are going to be, what some of the basic requirements for that system are going to be because otherwise you can bring somebody in. They can come up with any number from some of the low estimates that this commission has already heard to numbers that start ranging up into what LA is going to end up spending. And to be able to distinguish those, you're going to have to have some, a pretty good idea of, of what needs to be done. And you're also going to have to get some involvement and feedback from the people, the players that are likely to be involved in actually doing the development. So this is not something, I would think the best numbers that you get will not be something that you just have a consultant go off kind of by themselves. Some of the, some of the people who have expressed interest in doing the development are people who will be able to provide some of the best feedback about uh, developing numbers that you can move forward with. I would hope even if it's a year later than what was being discussed last spring during the budget cycle, even if it's not until the spring of 2018 that you are ready to move on to the next step. I would hope that the, you are actually ready to move on to, to solid development, if not before then. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kerr. Any further members of the public? Further commissioner discussion before we move on to the next item? I do have a, uh, I do have a comment on, on Mr. Kerry's uh, statement, which I thought was very helpful. Um, you know, I, I'm wondering whether, because as, as director, I mean, this first I want to commend Director Arntz on, on including this summary in his memo. It's actually very helpful. It gives, a, it gives me at least a good deal of insight into the progress that's been uh, made so far. It's very appreciated. Um, but I, I wonder whether what we need, since this is a new area and we're asking, we're really asking the department to launch into software development, which is something that's never done before. Uh, I mean, it might seem easy to the public commentators and to the, the lobbyists and to the interested 
public parties. Uh, but uh, this really is a new area, and, and uh, you know, uh, I, I think uh, enough of us here have had experience with government at various levels to know that when there's the implementation, what we're referring to is implementation of a brand new project, there's so many possible roadblocks that will happen along the way. Uh, uh, and you know, it's, you know, some of our previous commentators and uh, have kind of attributed a, a bad motive to the director, which I think is greatly misplaced. Uh, but even without bad motive, just, uh, ju just how difficult it is to implement and create any new project, particularly something like this. I wonder whether what we really need uh, is a quarterback within the department, right? Someone who actually has technical expertise or someone, or if, if it's not an individual, you know, some, you know, some, you know, but, you know Many of experts, right? So in the court system, oftentimes we uh, we you know we encounter systems where a judge just cannot handle the technical detail required to answer a particular question or do a competent job. In those instances, we empower our courts to assign a uh, you know uh, to assign a technical expert to help. And I wonder if this is one of those circumstances uh, where, in order to really move the ball forward and and to, uh, and to uh, assist the department director, whether there needs to be someone like that in the department, you know, someone who makes sure that uh, you know, the, the, the different parties that uh, need to be in place are in place, the resources are in place, and they actually know what they're talking about rather than trying to figure out what it would be like to know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. well, I may I'd like to also add, and I, uh, want to also echo that I really appreciate you including this in the report and all of that. So anything I've said is not a criticism, it's, a, it's actually, it, it's just working with this information, how we can work together to advance this initiative further and faster. Um, also, um, I, I have great ideas, I think, the, uh, the Commissioner, um, Commissioner June, and um, also uh, what, uh, members of the public have said, I, I guess I just want to men mention that, you know, to the point, like, we don't, we aren't a systems development, that's not what you do, um, certainly very good at, at election operations, uh, but but because of that, I think that, you know, this is one of those things, like, how do you even get started, and there are some examples, um, certainly, um, one of the things that I think was really great to see was the RFIs, perhaps consider, you know, uh, sending out RFIs about, Different, a different kind of an RFI about how would you attack this problem, and and maybe to those same to those same respondents, and let them give us some idea, and then you can follow with an RFP. Use their use some intellectual power that's free, and do that faster, and, and do that kind of iteration uh, might be might be great. I think technical quarterback and, and spending some money on something like that is a good idea, um, and, and I don't know what the mechanics of that are with the purchasing process uh, with, with, the, um, with the county. Um, I would also say that, you know, if you look at it, one other source of, say, inspiration, or at least I I examples, is the Department of Defense. It's an agency that actually doesn't develop, but actually do those, does contract to do the development process. So um, we can look at that, perhaps, as some examples. And finally, I guess I would say, because this is a place that is so um, that has so much innovative talent. There are places we could perhaps go for some advice, like Y Combinator or something like that. That might that might be able to give us some ideas uh, that we could we could look at too. So um, you know, maybe it's worth having a great story outside with some members, subset of the commission, obviously not uh, You know, to, to think through some of these ideas um, that that maybe how we can accelerate this with with lower costs and come up with some innovative approaches. By the way, one of the things I just want to also say again. Which uh, I thought about as a result of uh, uh, Mr. Carey's comment was we look at what the Department of Defense did. They were trying many years to come up with a self-driving vehicle in the desert, and what they finally ended up doing was creating a pri prize money and then having a contest, and that got them much further, much faster after years of failure. So those kinds of integrated contracting practices, as long as you well-defined the objective might be ways to accelerate this and get a better result. 
Yeah, um, Commissioner Jung, I, I absolutely agree with what you said. You know, I think there is a need for, for one individual that can kind of, has the technical chops to, to lead this and, and see it through. And in my mind, I think the, the purpose of the $300,000 was to provide the department and the director with, with money to, to have someone that, that fits those, you know, that can fulfill that role. And I think what we're seeing is that this role is kind of morphing from what I was seeing as someone who would be, you know, leading the leading this project technically into someone who's more doing like an evaluation. So, um, you know, I, I thought we had already done the work of providing the financial resources to fund someone like we were talking about. But, um, is uh, are there any restrictions on this money? So, in other words, can we use? Can we recommend that this money be used to hire a hire a technical person and an advocate with the Department of Open Source? However, the money spent, the mayor's office has to approve it. So it's not something that the department just can decide how they want to spend the money. Do you know to which degree the mayor's office has uh, control or supervision? For example, can we just say this 300000 is uh, to be all prize money? Or, well, it's going to be a combination of prize money and hiring one person. Or half of it's for one person and half of it is for a team. Or do you know what degree that we have to get permission in our goals? Uh, I, I think if we were to develop a statement with justification, you know, we could ask it for the money to be used in other, other ways. Um, right now, the, the mayor's office is thinking about uh, having a consideration of what it would take to develop a voting system. And that's what the current thinking is. But if, if, if there's a different avenue to take, we can you know, write something up, present it, talk about it. Yeah, this is kind of what I was getting at before when I asked if this is more of a collaborative thing or if, or if they're kind of bigger service on this or how much it's coming from the mayor versus you and what you're talking about. That's, that's kind of what I was asking before. So, um, one other question uh, regarding timeline. Getting approval from the mayor's office, is this a fairly simple matter with a under 30 day turnaround or are we planning on extending the timeline because we have an idea of how we want to spend this money and we got to wait 90 days, 120 days for the mayor to go through it? Do you have any idea? Well, I can't speak for that office. Do we have any like previous experience from this department where we've had money that we need approval from the mayor's office before? Well, our entire budget is based on the mayor's approval. Uh, it just depends where they are and what they're doing and developing the budget, whether issues are on their desk. I don't know. I, I mean, it seems that, uh, no, I, I can't answer the question, but shot the dark. Well, what is this, I mean, what's the upshot here? What's the outcome of this this discussion? I mean, uh, you know, what I, I'm sensing from this commission frustration uh, with um, you know, perhaps how, how this money is, is proposed to be used and well, it doesn't have to be a quarterback, but yeah, but I, I think many of us have um, you know, some some idea that it could perhaps be used in a better way. Uh, should should the should the commission uh, adopt a recommendation, uh, a resolution uh, that that the, the money be uh, used for a technical quarterback, uh, and recommend that to the mayor's office? Uh, what, what, how, what what are the commissioners thinking about this? Well, I, I have a couple of thoughts. I mean, number one is I think Director Arntz is hearing what we're discussing today. He's he's attending these monthly meetings, and he can certainly bring back to the mayor and the community and commission technology you know, our opinions, and I, I certainly hope he does that. I think also, I mean, I'm planning on, um, based on this meeting, I'm planning to reach out to the mayor's budget office myself just to kind of communicate um, my own opinions and what we've discussed today. Right, but I guess what I'm asking is to help crystallize both of those channels of communication. Would it help you to have a resolution from this commission? A strategy, essentially. Um, I, I, I don't, personally don't think it's necessary. 
I, mean, I think I think we've already spoken in the resolution that we passed before. But um, if we did do such a resolution, I'm not sure we'd be allowed to do it today because it's not a separate agenda item. I would appreciate from the uh, director if during our next meeting, when this is brought up, if we could have essentially a list in your good view, the best options, top three. Or do you think that we should have somebody in house because there's not an election in 2017, so you have the extra staff to essentially be the project manager, but an outside source would be doing most of the work, whether we hire uh, somebody to be part of the elections department uh, for this purpose, whether you have the prize money idea, whatever it happens to be, because um, I know we are putting you on the spot with, hey, we got these strategies, what do you think, um, to give you time to look at your resources to come up with some good options. And clearly you're not the only player here. Um, if we hear through the grapevine somehow that the mayor's office doesn't like bringing in people, but instead likes it when we go out, that's obviously going to influence our decision. And if you can bring any information to us regarding that, that will also play um, uh, play to what kind of strategy we should take. But I do think that at least having some options there so that we could probably say this is a good strategy going forward would definitely be helpful and useful, at least to me. In direct current based on what we've discussed today, do you feel that um, um, at the next meeting or in your communications with the mayor's office that, that you um, understand the, the point of view that we're discussing something you can present to them? I do. Okay. And uh, I just have one suggestion. Director Arndt said, you know, that I think you've heard from almost all of us that we loved your uh, section A in this report. Um, uh, I, I would suggest that, um, I mean, the way it's phrased, title is in consideration of the city developing its own voting system based on open source software. Um, I mean, the question that I would pose to you that I would love to see answered in every uh, report is how, how uh, the department can overcome the barriers to uh, timely implementing an open source voting system. That's the question that I, that I, that I would like uh, that I would like answered. Um, I think that's a good idea, but I think I would like also for the commission as a whole to send a letter to the mayor saying you know, what our expectations would be at the end of this process to have an open source system and to be very, you know, honest about what we expect because otherwise we may not get what we want. I think it's, you know, the mayor can override the director and everyone else, but if we had a clear understanding what we were expecting, that might help them to, you know, ensure that that happens. Because it's not just Director Ross, it's the commission appealing for you know, the work to be done in a timely manner and you know to the requirements that will be needed. Yeah, I I would agree. Um, I I know. Um, um, in the past, the commission has designated you know through the commission president that um, you know I could speak on behalf of the commission with other parts of city government and. Um, I am planning on communicating with the mayor's budget office about this, but um, I mean, I, can, I don't know to what extent we need an additional vote. I, I don't think we do, but I, I can certainly. But if you're willing to, to do that, I think that's very important because you know more about the voting systems than I do. Or, and you know, for us, it's a very important process that we need to have happen. And three hundred thousand is a lot of money to be spent if we're not going to get the kind of system that we're. In progress. Yeah. Would would it be helpful? I, mean, I don't know if we can do this under the agenda to have a resolution that, that authorizes the, the creation of a letter from this commission, and we would authorize you, um, uh, Commissioner Jordanic, to create that letter that basically stated what we thought 
should come from this $300,000 expenditure. Or at least, and I know that there's, there's this line between operations and policy, and we're somewhere you know, near that line. But, but I'm just wondering, something like that, could we do that, and would that be helpful? I was just gonna say that um, it's, it's not really agenda. I mean, this is just the director's report, and so yeah. I think it next meeting, I, I hate, I mean, you could have a special meeting if you wanted to move this forward a little bit faster, but it's not agendized to sort of, you know, uh, you know adopt, a, adopt a resolution or, or authorize it there. Um, so you could either do it at the next meeting or you could um, have a special meeting. And I move that we do this at the next I would also like to have it at the next meeting, um, simply because what goes in that letter, I think, will be influenced by uh, the director's next report regarding strategies. Okay. Well, the next agenda item is a future agenda, so we could we could um, move into that. But yeah. before we do, is there further discussion on this item? Okay. Seeing none, let's move on to agenda item number seven. Future agendas. Discussion of possible action regarding items for future agendas. I wonder, um, I'm not sure what you all think, but I wonder whether we should have a, you know, something that can do a standing item on timely uh, achieving the implementation of the open source voting system. You literally took the thought out of my head. Yeah. Um, I would second that. I assume that such would allow us some freedom to decide what kind of resolution would come out of that, right? For example, I don't think it's out of the question to think about perhaps, you know, at least for a few meetings, and even some maybe creating an additional subcommittee if we can do such a thing, and I don't know if we can, uh, just to focus on this issue for some period of time, at least until there's some, there's some, we're under contract with something. That would be helpful. I, I guess I would just like us to have options to help move this forward under, under however we formulate for that, for that next agenda item. Another option to be considered, I'm not saying a separate committee would be a bad idea, I'm but also, either. <laughs> More meetings, but, but also um, uh, redesignating one or two people to be our advocates, uh, such as you, Commissioner Trevonic, or uh, to the board to secure us the funding in the first place. But unless uh, Mr. White would think that we're wrong, I do think all of those would go under a single standing um, agenda item, which again, I think is an excellent idea, Commissioner Jean. It might also be, instead of a special committee, a great thing to refer to BOPEC and we can reconstitute the membership of BOPEC to match the people who would be most qualified to do that. Because otherwise BOPEC isn't you know, doing a lot most of the year, so that would be using BOPEC. So are, are we hearing that we, we would like the open source to be on the, the agenda for the next commission meeting or, or just more, okay. Yes. Definitely. And potentially Perhaps also that like, which we can consider under that agenda at the next meeting. Uh, further uh, comments? Uh, public comment? Come forward, speak to please. Hello, my name is Donna Giuseppe Makovich, and I made calls for months for this recent election. And I would tell people that every vote mattered, but you know, we're all feeling shaken. And I hope I didn't give people across the country a line, right? On voting day, we all are equal. So while you think about subcommittees and whether to write a letter and whether to redo your resolution, I would like you to please be efficient about it. There is an expert in the field right here. Don't drop this ball. You know, committee work, we all know, it goes aside, right? This is important. Please feel the urgency. You're like the seminal group. You can start a movement. This is important. So you actually really matter when it comes to this issue. Thank you. Thank you.
<clears throat> I'm Alan Deckard, and um, I just want to remind you that the, our organization, Open Voting Consortium, worked through a lot of these issues 15 years ago. And we had prototypes that we uh, demonstrated in 2004 up to 2008. We had a working prototype here at the Moscone Center. Um, <clears throat> and last, um, a little over a year ago, um, Professor, um, <clears throat> a professor from Florida was here. His um, system was used in, in um, New Hampshire. And I, I'm not sure if that was all clear to you that you, you kind of tracked, I think, his, the work that he did in New Hampshire. But at that time, um, it was an open source initially. He just gave the source code to New Hampshire and they kind of worked out their, their own system. But it was used, he did subsequently turn that into an open source system. And that was used in this 2016 election for disabled access. And so a lot of this work has been done already. And um, so you don't want to be, you know, be careful about reinventing the wheel. And I'll, I'll remind you of the Los Angeles experience, which I presented all of this to Los Angeles County in 2008. We walked through every step of this with the, with the Board of Supervisors and with um, Dean Logan when he was just coming in. It was actually even before he became the election director there. And they, they have a working prototype now, but it's, it's, it's a monster. It's, it's completely overkill for anything. It's not really open source. To this day, and the last I heard, um, he couldn't even say if it was going to be open source. So, and they spent 14 million on one design contract. One design contract, and it, there was nothing, nothing in production that was ready from that. So, you, you really, you know, you've got people in front of you that, that have, have done a lot of this work and you ought to take advantage of it because you, there's, there's a danger of going back through and reinventing the wheels 10 times over and you're not going to get, um, you're not going to get a better system and you're not going to get uh, one that's really affordable. You, you guys did a report um, with the LAFCO and uh, we spent a lot of time on that, um, 2015. And um, so I, what I'm hearing tonight is like, let's, let's start from scratch and rethink this whole thing. And you know, uh, it's just, it's just um, we're I'm not seeing a lot of progress here in terms of moving toward the, the goal of having a, a certified open, open source voting system. Now the prototypes I mentioned, they could be put into use very quickly. And um, as far as uh, getting it certified, I think that the code that's there right now, you're looking at three months, six months. I mean, you, you could have a, a certified system in a year if you wanted to. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, hold on a second. I have a question uh, on that, and I appreciate your comment. Uh, I do think that some of I do think your uh, one of your premises misplaced. It's uh, you know it's not this commission that uh, it intends to or will reinvent the wheel. Uh, but you know, but I think if you've read the scope of our power within the city charter, it's quite uh, described. There isn't that. You know, we, there are a lot of different parts that we have to uh, to deal with and contend with. Uh, but I, I have a right. Uh, no, no, hold on a second. But here, here's my question for you, which is that if you you said that uh, within the next year we could, uh, if, you know, we could have in place a, a voting system. Operable voting system. Uh, we, you know, you heard the discussion here about the three hundred thousand dollars that was allocated by, by the city. Uh, what uh, and uh, how the city uh, plans to use that money? In your view, what's the best use of that money? It would be in in s s selecting the the type of you know evaluating the work that's been done and selecting uh, the the. Uh, the systems you're going to go with. For example, the, uh, our system base is based on a touchscreen tablet. You make your selections on a tablet, you print out your ballot like that. And then the, um, the, the, the system for disabled access uses a voice vote. In other words, a person with the headphones or, or other uh, input devices can, when they hear their vote, for example, they can say vote. And, and um, even if they can't see. But those to kind of narrow it down to the kind of systems that you're working on, 
Um, of course, you're not going to get a certified system for 300,000. There's a lot more involved, but um, a lot there's a lot of that is documentation and testing, and then the the, the certification with the with the state of California. Um, you know, a lot of companies figure a, a whole new voting system. You know, is millions of dollars. I mean, L.A. County, like I said, 14 million on one contract. I think, I think, and going back to the LAFCO report, um, we 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 felt that four million, five million, you could easily get a, a complete system done, and with, that's a lot of that has to do with. Um, uh, the, the documentation, the testing, the certification that has to be done. Because uh, the basic systems, how, how this would work, you know, we've, we've pretty much we've pretty much worked it out. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Hi. Um, I'm Linda Lanier. You know that right now people are being put in, like, concentration camps. Prisons are basically uh, concentration camps. People are being tortured and um, tested upon in prison and psychiatric hospitals. John George Psychiatric Hospital in San Leandro, California is basically a concentration camp and people are dying in the streets. Um, so while you talk about rules and regulations and how you don't have a lot of power, I think what you should be doing as people with established um, uh, relations in, in communities is going out into communities and organizing people and saving people's lives because people are um, people are suffering greatly and what we need to be focusing on right now as people who care about human rights is not all of this but liberating people who are in concentration camps prisons so please um, keep that in mind while you decide what to do with your time because um, I it's um, just please keep it in mind um, and please investigate um, the psychiatric hospitals in the Bay Area because they are um, eugenicist testing grounds um, and and in prison people are raped and tortured and at the Berkeley jail um, you don't even get your phone call uh, they just throw you in a cell with a phone that doesn't work. So please, every every moment, think about all the people who are suffering in prison and in psychiatric hospitals instead of thinking about rules. Because what you need to be doing right now is breaking rules. Because the fascists who are in power right now, they've broken all the rules. They don't care about rules. So you need to start breaking the rules, okay? Please. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. My name is David Carey. Uh, I'd certainly support uh, more regular uh, review of the open source voting system here, especially this year. Um, I will point out that uh, the resolution that you passed in 2015 called for the hiring of a project manager for the open, board voting, open source voting system. Um, that's, uh, uh, to me, that sounded kind of what uh, Commissioner Jung was talking about in terms of a, of a quarterback. Uh, and, and whether it's somebody, uh, you know, I, I think following that, that was my understanding of, of what a good portion of the $300,000 would be doing here during this first phase. Um, and, so, and so I think there is a lot of opportunity. The Taking on the, the open source voting system project is a big additional chunk of work for the Department of Elections and for Director Arns. Um, and it is a big chunk of extra work for this body as well. And um, it's why you are all getting a 20% increase here as of the beginning of the year, right? The, the, um, it, really, it really will take some extra work to not only make sure that the conduct of elections and bring in a new interim voting system uh, during the next few years goes smoothly, but that taking not, a big, not only just a big chunk of work, but a big chunk of work that is very different from the sort of things that the Department of Elections in, the, in this commission has dealt with before. And I, I think there's a, a I, I encourage you to do everything that you can to, to help make the project and uh, Director Arnes be successful in, in moving that forward. Uh, San Francisco and the rest of us all need it. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Curry. 
for the members of the public. Okay, seeing none. Let's move on to agenda item number eight. Officer elections. So I'm just gonna read this description here like we've done in the past. Discussion of possible action to elect officers of the San Francisco Elections Commission. The process should be as follows. The presiding commissioner will open nominations first for the Office of President of the Elections Commission. When there are no further nominations, the presiding commissioner will close nominations. Public comment will then be sought. At the conclusion of public comment, there will be a roll call vote of all commissioners, during which each commissioner shall say the name of a nominee for whom he or she wishes to vote. Any nominee receiving four votes shall be elected president. The same process will then be followed for the office of vice president. The terms of office for the new officers will begin immediately at the conclusion of tonight's meeting. Okay, so, um, you know, before commencing this process, is there any uh, commissioner discussion? I do have a comment. Uh, I don't know who's uh, gonna be nominated here. It's certainly certainly not gonna be me. Uh, but um, who, whomever is our next president, um, uh, I've been on the commission now, I, I think for three, three presidents, and I've seen a range of uh, leadership styles uh, and uh, you know, uh, Every, every leadership style has its pluses and minuses, but whoever is the, the next president, uh, one, one question I would ask the candidate to answer is uh, how they intend to um, proceed uh, keeping agenda items within the scope of uh, our authority granted by the charter, and second, how, how they intend to keep meetings uh, efficient, sort of respecting everyone's time and pre preventing the meetings from uh, meandering. Okay. Further discussion? Okay, so let's open the nominations for the Office of President. Are there any nominations? I would like to nominate Commissioner Zhang. <laughs> I respectfully decline, and I would like to nominate Commissioner Jordani. <laughs> okay, I'll accept the nomination. Okay, further nominations for president? Uh, I have another nomination. I would like to nominate uh, Commissioner Donaldson. I'll decline. Thank you. <laughs> okay, further nominations? I have one more nomination. I'd like to nominate Commissioner Stefan. Oh, no. I decline. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, anyone else you'd like to nominate Commissioner John? Yes, just one more. I'd like to nominate Commissioner Paris. Since we're running out of candidates and Commissioner Rowe um, doesn't want to run for their position again, in the spirit of competitiveness, I will accept. Okay. Uh, further nominations? I'm not sure if anyone's not been nominated yet. That's everybody. Okay. Um, so, well, Commissioner Chung had a question that he wanted to ask the different nominees, so. Um, Commissioner Harris, would you like to? Um, sure. As to your question regarding uh, keeping it within the scope, I am more comfortable adding more agenda items so that we could just be much more specific. I do think that the commission does tend to meander a little bit. They are worthwhile conversations, um, but most of the time I do feel they are conversations that we could see coming. So I'd be a little bit more comfortable adding smaller agenda items. I think the idea of adding, for example, the open source voting system, which we constantly bring up, but is rarely an agenda item, is a perfect example of more um, well-defined scope of conversation. Yeah, as far as you had a two-part question, the first part was how to keep things within the bounds of the topic, and I tend to rely on the deputy city attorney for that if something meanders too far, then I expect He'll, he'll step in. As far as the second one, in my experience, um, meetings tend to go longer when there are more agenda items, because then you build in a public comment period and, and so on. So my tendency is, has been only to um, put something on the agenda if, if we really know we want to discuss it. And then within the meetings, you know, I, I kind of rely on the commissioners to know Do you know remember it everyone being tortured in prison right now? Being raped and tortured in prison. 
please. Rely on the commissioners for knowing whether they're, you know, commenting when they feel it's useful for discussion. Okay, um, further comments? Okay, let's open it up to public comment. Seeing none, okay, let's do a, a roll call vote. And remember, this is, you wanna state the name of the person that you're voting for. So, Commissioner Rowe. Commissioner Judonic. Commissioner Donaldson. Commissioner Judonic. Commissioner Paris. Paris. And I vote for myself, Commissioner Judonic. Commissioner Safant. Okay, Commissioner John. Commissioner Jordani. Okay, so the vote is uh, five for Commissioner Jordanic and one for Commissioner Paris. I hope I counted that correctly. Okay, so then. Um, Actually, Chris, I'm sorry, did you ask for public comment before the vote? Yes. Oh, you did, okay, sorry. So the, um, now follow the same process for the Office of Vice President. So nominees for Vice President. I would like to nominate Commissioner Young. I decline, thank you. I would like to nominate Commissioner Rowe. I decline, thank you. I would like to nominate Commissioner. <laughs> I would like to nominate you. <laughs> um, I'll accept the nomination. I have two nominations, uh, Commissioner Paris and Commissioner Stefan. I can come the nomination, thank you. In the spirit of competitiveness, I will accept. Okay, so we have two nominations, Commissioner Donaldson and Commissioner Paris. Um, any further nominations? I think that was everybody. Okay, so let's do the roll call vote. Commissioner Rowe? Public comment. Um, okay, sure, we can do another public comment. Seeing none, let's do the vote. Uh, Commissioner Rowe. Commissioner Paris. Commissioner Donaldson. Commissioner Donaldson, myself. Commissioner Paris. Paris. And I will vote for uh, Commissioner Paris. Commissioner Savant. Uh, Commissioner Donaldson. And Commissioner John. Commissioner Donaldson. Okay, um, apologize, I kind of lost track. But <laughs> I think we have a tie. We have a tie. Okay, so let's um, vote again, I, I think is the process. Okay, okay so let's put it off till next meeting when there's mm -hmm. a full commission. Why don't we have some discussion about why we voted the way we voted, and maybe we can then vote after that if anybody wants to say that. I, I will say that I really appreciated Commissioner Paris stepping up to the plate this year particularly with the, the secretary application review, which is a very burdensome process. And I thought he, he stepped up to the plate to serve on BOPEC, and I really appreciated that. And that was the reason that I uh, think that he would be an excellent vice president. Yeah, I would uh, also like to echo those comments. I, I noticed that Commissioner Paris has been taking more responsibility recently with the reviewing the applicants and as well. Um, and I'm sure we're all really thankful for him doing that. Agree. If it helps anything, I am willing to withdraw my name from nomination. Finally, just have another vote. Okay, so let's do another vote. Commissioner Rowe. Commissioner Paris. Commissioner Donaldson. Commissioner Paris. Commissioner Paris. Commissioner Paris. I vote for Commissioner Paris. Commissioner Savant. Commissioner Paris. Commissioner John. Commissioner Paris. Okay, so Commissioner Paris uh, is unanimous. Um, next Vice President. Congratulations. So um, uh, that concludes the meeting. The time is now 7.51 p.m. Have a wonderful evening, everyone.